Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Dad's Night to Cook. I'm your professionally amateur, always tasty, non-time committing, full menu home cooking dad, Chef Manny. Letting you all there know that when it is your night to cook, you do not have to pick up a telephone in order to take out because a home cooked meal can be found in your pantry and your refrigerator. So you can have your children singing, Dad's Night to Cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those of you who've watched the channel in the past probably have been wondering, where the hell has Chef Manny been? I know, I know. I've been busy since last November. So we're going to take three minutes to show you what I've been busy doing. And then we're going to come back and we're going to cook a delicious meal that's going to have your kids wondering when it is your night to cook again. Promise you that. So let's take a look. Very well. I will think of something, and the rest of you must find out what. But I only answer to questions yes or no. So I'm going to go on stage to do one of my scenes. We're backstage of the theater. Oh, God. Look, this is the wall. Their fathers built between their houses. They built it eight. Uh-huh. You see, I told you I was a little busy. But today, we are going to be working on a very delicious meal. I call this a Southwestern Chicken Fiesta dish. Oh, it is brilliant. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our chicken prepped and marinated. So I'm going to go ahead and go show you that. And let's get this meal cooking. Welcome back to Dad's Night to Cook. Hit it! Dad's Night, Dad's Night to Cook. It is Dad's night, Dad's night to cook. From the pantry, he'll take a Loma book to see what we'll dine on tonight. What you gonna cook, Dad? What we gonna eat? His recipe's great, A it plus. is a must. When he cooks, he makes believe and trust. And a wonderful meal on the table. Yummy for a tummy. It is Dad's night to cook. <laughs> All right, so one of the side dishes, well, the only side dish we're gonna have with this Southwestern chicken fiesta meal is we're gonna make baked polenta. All baked polenta is baked grits. That's what I call them, grits, but they're baked polenta. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a white cornmeal, which is grits, just grits, uh, and we're gonna put some stuff in it to make it a little bit more Southwestern. So let's get our baked polenta going, all right? Okay, so let's get our baked polenta going. So over medium heat, I'm going to add four tablespoons of butter. Now to that, I'm gonna let it melt a little bit and I'm gonna add me about two tablespoons of olive oil. I like to add the olive oil because once you add olive oil, it keeps it from um, burning your butter, okay? And now we're gonna add some olive oil. Like I said, about two tablespoons of olive oil, and this keeps it from 
uh, really burning. And I just like the combination of flavor with the olive oil and the butter. So about two tablespoons. Now we're gonna let that melt a little bit. Now we're gonna infuse some flavors in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some garlic. Um, some I use minced garlic to just give it that little kick that we're gonna need. So we're gonna use some minced garlic and we're gonna use also some jalapeno. Now part of this combination of um, Southwestern um, polenta is that we're gonna use pepper jack cheese and pepper jack already has jalapenos in it, but we're gonna add a little bit more just to flavor up the aromatics of this butter and olive oil. So we got our garlic in, now we're gonna add our jalapenos. I won't need much jalapenos. I'm gonna put a, probably a good teaspoon in there, a good heaping teaspoon. So we won't need much because again, the pepper jack cheese that we're gonna infuse into our um, polenta will have jalapenos in it. Pepper jack has jalapenos in it already. Oh, if we had smell of vision you could smell this stuff. It smells so good. So we've let that butter and that um, olive oil brown up a little bit. And the smell in this kitchen is divine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our water. We're gonna add our two and a half cups of water. And then we'll add our rest of our seasoning. All right, now that we have our water to boil, we'll start adding our seasoning. Now, polenta doesn't have any flavor, so you gotta salt this thing up. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a, tea, um, a full teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon and a half. I'm telling you, they ain't got no, this thing ain't got no flavor. So one and a half teaspoons of salt. A half teaspoon of pepper. Be a generous teaspoon. There you go. And then when we add our polenta, we're gonna keep, have to keep whisking that thing so it doesn't stick, cause polenta tines, tends to stick to the bottom. So you gotta whisk that thing. If y'all can smell this thing with the pepper and all. So we're gonna put two cups of our cornmeal in there or polenta, whichever you want to call it. But again, you gotta whisk that thing cause you don't want no lumps, no clumps. And you don't want that thing to, to stick to your, your, the bottom of your pan. So you're gonna have to keep whisking that thing. It thickens up quickly. So you gotta work fast and furious. And remember, you gotta just keep stirring your polenta so it doesn't stick. It's gonna have that consistency of like mashed potatoes kind of thing. If you don't get all the lumps out, it's okay. Once you bake it, you're gonna be just fine. I mean, if you were serving just wet, then I'd say work them lumps out. But since you're gonna be baking it, kind of, you know, you can forego whipping them out. And then we're gonna to continue to stir this up. Make sure you don't go get all over your house. Stir it kind of clockwise, counterclockwise, figure eight kind of movement. So don't go splatting all over your house. All right, now we turned our heat off and now is when we're gonna add our pepper jack cheese. I, I grated about a block of pepper jack, which should give me about two cups of cheese um, to go in there. I'm gonna stir that in. I'm telling you, flavor time right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our polenta into a greased pan. Um, and then we're gonna have to let it sit on the counter until it gets to room temperature. And then we have to refrigerate it before we bake it. So this is a overnight process, okay? So we'll let this sit until it reaches room temperature. And then we'll wrap it and refrigerate it. And then we'll bake it to make our baked polenta. So now we're gonna work on our baked polenta. So we had our polenta in the refrigerator and I had mine in the refrigerator overnight. So you can see that it's kind of firm. So what we wanna do is we wanna take it out of this pan and put it onto a lined um, baking sheet, um, greased baking sheet and bake that up. So what you wanna do is you wanna flip it so you can cut these into little brick squares. So let's see how this is gonna work out, okay? I'll give it a little tap, tap, tap. Hopefully it'll come out. 
Ka 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 ka. Okay. There you go. So what you want to do is you want to cut these into like um, <clears throat> nines. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the center. If you want to, you can use a ruler, but I'm going to just eyeball mine down the center like so. And then down the 90 degree. If you want, you can keep some warm water beside you to make sure that it don't stick on you. Take your bricks and then you're going to put them on a lime grease pan. And we're going to bake these mother up. But these are really thick polenta blocks. So we're going to, again, bake them in the 350. While we're baking our banana pies, we can go ahead and stick these in there. And at 350. What I like to do is once they're baked, I get a pat of butter and just let the pat of butter melt all over on the top of these and the wonderful meal on the cakes. table. Yummy for a tummy. It is as night too.